Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My apologies because some of my slides still in Indonesia language. This is the, I think, the first day that I can join uh, fully because in the last seven days in our country, there is happening emergency situations because omnibus law on job creations has been passed and it also become a new big threat for our struggle. So I will share our experience, our context in addressing the challenge that facing by our struggle in terms of promoting agrarian reform and also strengthening peasants' right to land and also on how to facing also the food systems that still not addressing people-based situations. Still, uh, for the context and emerging challenge, I think we realize that capitalism systems that also making the development models become our major issues in pursuing and sustaining our land rights. In Indonesia situations, even though we already have agrarian reform policy, still a long right for peasants, for small-scale farmers to get their rights to land. And majority of our peasants, majority is small-scale peasants, which is only on uh, less than half hectares of land. And there is a big allocation, thousands of hectares for mining, thousands of hectares for plantations, monoculture systems, and also big portions of land also for forest industry. And it's most of in our country is overlap with people's land rights. And then about the food systems, liberalizations of agricultures, liberalizations of food productions and import food policies our challenge also and current situations with the impact of COVID-19 to the peasants family if it's for community and labor is also become highest interventions in our struggle because our country is depend on food importations so the good thing that now the states is dependent on small scale producers like peasants family and also fish of community that produce uh, food and then there is a major situations which thousands of laborers is also being fired because the economic crisis it's become also challenges but also uh, opportunity for our movement to, to connect each other and then there is like i said before about policy paradox between agrarian reform, but also in the same time, still strong land market system for big holder are still happening. And then the next challenge is also how to consolidate and to unite our social capital between the movement. This is just an overview where our grassroots member has reclaimed their lot. There is a 500, 53 villages with over almost 700,000 hectares and thousands also of household. This is basically overlap with many concessions in plantations, forestry concessions. So this is still a big challenge for us to getting land rights. Some has been redistributed, but majority of our locations still facing the challenge to getting the full rights. But our movement should also transforming, not just only waiting for the state or the government to implement agrarian reform, but also how we as the movement should transforming our struggle also. So in our context, KPA with the members, especially peasants members, creating an approach which is people-based agrarian reform village, where in those locations that has been reclaimed, we do a four step on how to transforming our struggle. First is transforming land control and ownership, even between the families, between the landholder among the peasants. So there is no injustice situations in the village level. And then how to transforming land use and village efficiency also on how to allocate land in ourselves for our efficiency, for our dream about the justice in village level. And then transforming land management and productions, and then transforming distributions and consumptions on how 
rural community can really gaining their food sovereignty and also how to have food productions also to be distributed to another village or to city. So this is basically our locations in 23 province in 550 villages. We do mapping, we do land management and also productions uh, collectively, individually. So it depends on their own context. So this is the agricultural productions from our grassroots members that still facing the challenge also on how to gaining the rights through agrarian reform policy. So this is on how we facing the challenge during the pandemic COVID-19 situations. Our organizations having this scheme on how to collect and how to distribute the food productions from our people-based agrarian reform locations. So during the COVID-19, we are trying to prioritize our market, not public at large, but only to distribute our food productions from all the villages to the priority consumers. We collaborate with the labor movement. For us, it is uh, our breakthrough on how to not depend on the mainstream food systems. So we try to create our systems and collaborate with the labor unions as our market. And then also how we do food exchange between the peasants and visible community. We mobilize food donations, food crops for the villages that don't have any more land farming. And then to the cities also who get impact from the COVID-19 situations. And then we also build our solidarity-based economy on how to collect and to produce the food, distribute to the priority consumers, which is mostly poor community in cities, in urban areas, and also with the labor union. I think labor union is really a big market on how to break the mainstream food system and mainstream economy. This is our initiative. So basically the spirit is how peasants help laborers, peasants uh, helps physical community, not only talking about right to land, but also right to food. If we really serious and wants to achieve a food sovereignty, but still land right is become the essential in our struggle. This is the food exchange between the peasants and the physical communities during the pandemic COVID. So I think the lesson learned that we can get that still, of course, land right is essential for our struggle. We need to still have effective actions on how to proceed our struggle. But during the COVID pandemic, I think it's so that land right is essential if we want to talk about food sovereignty in many level can be global, regional, especially country level. And then small scale food producers, which is peasants and FISOFO become the major actor in helping the situations, the food crisis, the economic crisis. And in Indonesia context, the agriculture sectors become the first sector that help our crisis, economic crisis. So calling to the government is that monoculture systems or land grabbing for the big holder is making our vulnerable situations for the economic and food crisis. So the recommendations, I think we need to still continue to have effective actions to fight uh, land grabbing and criminalizations that still facing by the peasants and land rights activists, even during the pandemic. And then, of course, we still demanding the states to implement genuine agrarian reform, but not only for land rights, but also supporting support for the peasants. I think it is also important for us to have example of best practice to implement people-based agrarian reform from below. I think for the future, it is important for us to creating our own market and our economy systems. And social capital is important and also need a strong relations between peasants and labor movement and also youth and women in rural are essential to the movement. So I think empowerment for young generations in rural regenerations and women are important for us. Thank you very much. Oh,
ang pamilyang magsasakal.